So start that up. All right. So let's see. So we were working on a whole bunch of stuff. I remember there last time we was kind of working through repertoire from before, and uh, we're doing a few uh, uh, scales and arpeggios and double stops. I do believe is that right? Did we get a new set of double stops in the key of D or something like that? Something like that. I think it was D. I, I don't remember D. that at one all. Of those letters. One of those letters. You know. Let me see here. Let me see. I'll check it I out. I know we have G. I'm not sure about D. Okay, let's see. I have B major here that we just I just recently got. Dog major? D major. Okay, yeah, that works. I'll just resend the because uh, I did write out the uh, double stocks. Yeah, I, mean, I was just kidding. Yeah, we did D last week. Oh, we did, we did do dog. Okay. We did dog last week. Dog major, got or it. Or last one day, sorry, last one day. Okay, dog major. It's a lot easier to use words than letters because they all sound the same. That we E minor, when I was a blues guy, E minor used to be, well, E was Elvis. That's the guy that I oh. played with would, would lean over and say, shuffle, Kia Elvis. Uh, but then if it was E minor, he'd say, sad Elvis. <laughs> <laughs> okay here we go so let's start off with g always a good place to start g major two octaves scale and arpeggio and then we'll uh we'll do the uh double stops and then we'll we'll try some stuff in that key i think we had the swallowtail jig going did we were we playing the swallowtail yeah and if we do the cash afterwards cash jig we did doing some rolls and stuff so we'll play a little bit of that see if we can get it kind of fast maybe or increase the tempo or something and then we'll go to D and we'll practice D okay so we'll start off with G let me get my tuner up and running here it always crashes and I have to restart it and we'll do it there we go there's my tuner okay so first of all Okay, so let's try a nice G major scale, not in a hurry, but bang on in tune. Ready, go. say I wasn't completely 100%. There were a few I had to pull in there. I don't know why. The last lesson I taught was about an hour ago, so maybe I'm just getting a little cool. So let's try it again. And I'm going to try for 100% this time. And Sue Leader's going to use an earbud. Very good idea, Sue. Okay, here we go. A one, two, three.
time was much better for me. I don't know about you. Hopefully it was better for you too. Now, let's try the arpeggio at the same tempo. And we're going to do it straight up twice. Once and then again. Ready? Go. Susan Blazer, she said she's getting back from overseas today, so she won't be playing, but she wanted to check it out. All right. Okay, so now what I'd like to do with the scale and arpeggio is increase the tempo. How was everybody's batting average at that tempo? Was it okay? Are you doing okay? Everybody getting, say, 80 to uh, 100%? Okay, so then let's up it. Okay, we're going to do it kind of like dum, 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 dum. And don't worry about tuning too much. I'd rather you pay attention and see how you do and see if there's any notes that give you problems uh, when we go fast because you know that's they're going to be the problem notes. Okay, so let's try a little faster scale and then arpeggio. A one, two, three, and. decent bat and average even at that tempo yeah I did uh, oh sorry go ahead I did pretty good I'm still I've been playing viola all morning oh. so I'm still getting back to being in a, on a violin so everything's smaller everything so there were smaller. some notes that were very sharp just yeah. like I'm used to being on like the C string and having to reach up to get the G for sure, for sure. Okay, well, we're going to do it again anyway. But uh, that, it's good that you're noticing that. See, that's really the most important thing. Is anybody else noticing anything? Like, what, did anything glare at you in terms of uh, a problem when we went fast? Okay, well, let's do it right away then. Straight away. A one, two, three, go. So we're up in our game, getting a little faster and keeping the accuracy, and that's the whole point of that. Now let's do some double stops in the key of G, okay? Nice and slow, we don't have to be in a hurry for this. So we'll do two bows per set of double stops, and let's give it a go. Ready, go.
got to say that mine, that was one of the best times that I've done those double stops. The, I always, there's not ever a time when I don't hit one and it's not a little off and I got to pull it in. That time it was only one. One double stop that I had to pull in. I don't know how that happened, but it was pretty good. Let's do it again. See if we can get good results again. Well, for me anyway. Are ready? Two, three, go. find to be the hardest one let's do this I want to I want to know what you guys think which is the hardest one for the left hand and which is the hardest one for the right hand okay what do you think Claire what's your what are your thoughts which one is the hardest one I could not really say you can't say it's all the same equal level of hard not at this point, yeah, because I'm still not really great at these. Oh, yeah. So, instead of just trying to figure out which one is the hardest, I'm just trying to try get good notes on both, like good, like a, a decent, you know, like equal yeah. equal weight of the bow on the notes so that it, you sound continuously both notes. So you're saying that you're still challenged by the right hand. That's kind of the thing that you're that you're mostly yeah. for that's good I'm glad to hear it you know like the intonation part is probably doing really good anyway but that's yeah. always fixable but the whole the touch thing is the more important thing so that's good to hear really really good how about somebody else what about Kalida what do you think is the hardest pair of notes to play at the same time um I think definitely like the top one um uh, yeah that one, I just like have to get um, my like G, like I have to like bring it in, I guess. You bring it in. That I have to as well. I find whenever I hit that one, my G is automatically sharp and I got to flatten it. How about you? Yeah, I think the same, yeah. Okay. And it's a, you make a good point because the, the problem is, is once you got full pressure on the three, the two, the two kind of sticks down too far and puts too much pressure and that's why it comes out sharp so usually for most people you have to relax the pressure on the two but leave the pressure on the three so we'll see if that helps you when we do it again anybody else what about elizabeth you got a pair that you hate <laughs> i struggled because i was trying to do it on the g string i was starting on g so i was a mess <laughs> oh okay all right well but yeah but i'm i'm, I'm on track now yeah, I know what's going on now. Okay, good. Well, we'll try it again anyway. What about Sue Leader? Do you want to you you want to tell us your your most hated? <laughs> yeah, I think I'm with you guys, you and Calida, on that um, that high G, that high G is really hard to keep it in range. It goes very sharp. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's and that's normal. So and it's great that you're noticing that. So let's do, unless somebody else has a most hated. What about Pearl? Honestly, I'm just gonna have to agree with all of you guys. It's always that one. The it's fourth. Always, yeah, it's always just getting a little bit sharper, and you always have to bring it in, and you listen to it, and you're like, "That does it. That can't be right." Yeah. <laughs> Very good. Okay, well, let's do it. So, first of all, I'm gonna play you that fourth. <laughs> And I realize that's bang on there, bang on. And I realize right now that I do have a little pressure on the two, but it's it's I pulled it back kind of south of the note so that I have room for that pressure. And then it rings like a bell, eh? So 
that's what we're going for with that fourth at the top. Okay, let's do it again. One more round of the double stops. And then we'll practice swallowtail. All right. Ready, go. You guys getting any better? You feeling better about that one at the top? Good. Okay. All right. Shall we move on to the old swallowtail jig, I'd say. So I can't remember how fast we had it going last week. Let me think now. <laughs> reasonable tempo did we have it going somewhere around there okay well let's start at that tempo and see how it goes all right so we're playing the swallowtail two times and the kesh two times you can put some rolls in if you have them otherwise you don't have to you just kind of concentrate on getting that melody and let's just see what happens all right <laughs> All right, a one, two, three.
Geez, after I got started that, I thought it was pretty slow. But gee, it never hurts, of course, to go slow. Uh, but I think we might have been playing it faster than that last time. Hi, Jocelyn. How you doing? Good. <laughs> good. How you doing? Good. Good. Good to see you. We were good just, to see uh, you too. yeah, we were just practicing swallowtail and the cash together. Okay. Okay. okay, great. And we're gonna do, we're gonna do it again. I stopped partway through to let you into the meeting. I really tried hard to do to do it with the scroll of my fiddle, like I was very close. <laughs> uh, but then to do the final thing, I had to let go. I'm gonna have to get a foot mouse. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt. <laughs> oh no problem, no problem. Like I'm I said, grab my other book then. Sure, sure, no problem. Yeah, I'm I'm getting pretty good at uh, at manipulating the mouse with my foot. I used to do a lot of that during the Celtic Orchestra rehearsals because people would come in late and kind of all I have. If I can get it onto the thing, then all I got to do is hit it with my foot, and people can come in. You know. Anyway, so that was quite slow. I thought that was pretty slow. How did you guys feel? Were you able to get through it for the most part? Yeah. Okay. Do you think we could go a little tiny bit faster? Just put a tiny edge on it there. Okay. So it's instead of this, it's going to be more like this. Okay, so it's just got a little now introducing a bit of the rhythm into it. Okay, it's not just straight eighth notes now. It's got a little swing to it that I achieved by making the first note of each triplet a little bit stronger with more of bow. Yes, Susan? Uh, you put a roll on there at the, uh, was it on the D? Maybe at the, as you were just playing right there. Yeah. And so instead of like a D, C, D, do you do like a roll in there and then another D? Or what did you do there? I play, instead of the D, C, D, I do a roll, uh -huh. and then it's right on to the A. Oh, okay. So that roll then replaces uh, those other two notes. Okay. Yes, correct. And the thing is about, about that particular uh, uh, phrase there is that if you look at D, C, D, right? And this is going to yeah. be the case in any jig you do. It's almost a roll. Yeah. All yeah. it needs is one more note. And so that's kind of a classic place that you would stick a roll. So the notes are then, uh, again, for a roll, it's uh, above the same, below and back. Is yep. that what it is? That's right. So in this case, it would be D, E, D, C, D. Okay. Yeah. Okay, for a D roll. And it's one of the harder ones. The third finger rolls are hard, a little bit harder than the others. Oh, so you used your, do you use the fourth finger there on the E? Oh, the yeah. E? Oh, yeah. 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 yeah, that's what I always say. I don't often play fourth finger notes because uh, I like the open strings. So my pinky is really just for the high B and decoration. Yep, that's it all in one bow. Oh, yes, that's it. Okay, that's how you do it. Now you might want to move your bow a little swifter than that, but that is exactly how you do it. Yeah, I was just getting the notes before I started playing, yeah. No, oh, it was good. It was good. Those are the notes. And that's kind of, when people start to get that roll, it first sounds like this. <laughs> and because it, it's hard to smooth the bow, smoothly move the bow through that. It's kind of like walking and chewing gum. So I find it best to really kind of put the gas pedal on the bow to get through that part. Okay, very good question. Let's do it again, guys. <laughs> Ready, two,
here we have Simone. So that looked at like everybody was getting along pretty good there at that speed, which is kind of a, it's a clip. It's getting there. We could probably go a little faster though. Hi, Simone. We could probably go a touch faster. I don't know. What do you think? Let's, let's take a little breather. I'm going to go dry, grab a drink and then we're going to try it faster kind of like this. So, uh... Okay, so limber up. I'm just going to go grab another bubbly. This one was almost empty. And we're going to try that at that speed. So limber up those limbs. So Pearl, what school do you go to? I actually go to ESA, Etobicoke School of the Arts, and I'm attending for uh, music, so the violin. Oh, terrific. So is David Ambrose teaching there still? Uh, yeah, we actually went to the recording from the because everything went wrong twice. <laughs> yeah, nice. He's got a lot of patience. I sang with him in uh, Mississauga Festival Park. Anyway, dance back. <laughs> All righty. So, we're going to do it. Simone, you know what tune we're doing now? Right on. Oh, why is this public kid not working? Oh, my God. Just one thing. <laughs> So what year of high what year are you in, Pearl? Right now I'm in grade eleven, so I'll be grad uh, so I have to be next year and then I'll be graduating. That's true. Oh my god. And what about you, Kalea? Okay. I'm the same. I'm also in grade eleven. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> You know, uh, when I was in grade 11, it's when I started playing drums. I was, well, grade 10, or really put grade 11. And I this weekend, uh, my friend from high school that I played with, Jason Barron, is his name, he lives here in Toronto. And we reconnected the, a few years ago. And uh, my wife played, he's a real estate agent, and my wife played at his little party he had for his clients with his, uh, with his brass quintet, her brass quintet. And I went down there, and Jason was reminding me of all the practices that we used to have in my basement way out in the country. And the guys that came out to practice with me, their names were Seamus and Chad and Jason. And uh, they always said they had a ride home. So my mom would take them all the way out to my house in the country, and then we'd practice and practice, have a great time. And then at about 10 o'clock, the, the ride would uh, not happen and my mom would have to drive them all all the way back into North Sydney like like every time and there was one night when they came out and there was supposed to be an uncle picking them up never happened and uh, my mom said well sorry guys I can't drive you back into town the cars are gone and that's it we you know I can't do it you're gonna have to hitchhike so she put them out on the road and uh, and they, she gave them, she had just finished making brownies, so she gave them one brownie each, and they went out to hitch a ride. And the next day I saw them at school, and my friend Chad said, Oh my God, your mom put us out, and then the lights all went off in the house, and the car didn't come by for two hours. And my buddy Seamus said, And I dropped my brownie, and the dog ate it. <laughs> anyway, that's what it was like when I was in grade 11. Okay, here we go. Swallowtails followed by the Kesh. And we're gonna we're gonna actually take it at a speed here. We're gonna try and see. And if you have trouble, just keep jumping back in. So here we go. A one, two, three. Thank you. 
right, now that was, everybody looked like they were cooking along okay there. A couple of uh, pauses for the cause, but other than that, pretty good. And that was, so you know, so, uh, yeah. So that was 90, guys. 90 on the metronome. So that's pretty good. I think that's faster than what we had uh, last week. I think it's a little bit faster. I think we got up to 85 or something last week. So it's a touch faster, and that's great. Anybody having trouble at 90 that I can help with? No? I, I think it's just a matter of me memorizing uh, the notes a little better. Mm. Uh, I got Swallowtail pretty good. Um, Kesh Jig... Um, I still have to practice more. I'm not getting your rhythm quite right. I'm still da 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 like straight. And you're doing this beautiful do 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 do. You know what I mean? I'm not quite the jig getting rhythm. your rhythm. Yeah, yeah it, the jig rhythm. I'm not I, you know, I haven't really talked about it a whole lot. Uh, but I wouldn't mind, since we're getting it up to this kind of speed and Jocelyn's making reference to it, and we might as well talk about it. So, first of all, you get a jig rhythm by accenting the first note in each group of triplets that you see in the music there. You see that each bar has two sets of triplets, and the first of each triplet gets a great big full-on bow, as much as you can, to belt out that note and make it an accent, okay? And then the other two are very, very short bows. And basically, it comes out like this. Watch my bow. So what I always say is my arm moves two times per measure. Ooh, ooh, nickety dickety. And my hand does the rest. See that? Now for you guys, you're gonna have to consciously make that effort. For me, after all these years of being forced to do it as a child, my arm just naturally flops it out. So the only effort I do is this, and then you see how my hand does the other two notes for me. See that? And then I do the up bow. Same thing. Now in that one, it's a little harder because to get that last little kick, I have to put in a little extra effort there. See that? But on the down, no effort at all. Just the arm. And then before I'm finished the down, I start the up. And before I'm finished the up, I start the down. And when you make that into a loop, a loop, it really gets to be groovy. It looks like this. See that? So that's your eventual goal. For now, it's going to look more like this. <laughs> or something like that. But after a while, hopefully you'll get that dance. And you can just kind of be very loose with the bow and let it roll like that. Now I have a way to work on it. First of all, it's really good to work on it on just a single string. So let's all give that a try. So put your bow on any string, it doesn't matter because you're muted. <laughs> and uh, you can just kind of, we'll just do this rhythm for a little while. Watch me and just try to match me. And it's what I've seen so many times in the past is what I've seen here tonight, which is it starts off good, and then after a while it kind of looks, it looks like it's le just leveling out, so it's all kind of even. And that's what happens whenever you're doing a groove, trying to get a groove, that's the way it comes together. At first it's forced, and then it starts to become more natural. So you just let that be, okay? Now let's do it again on the open string, see if we can get the same thing going.
Okay, how are we getting along? People able to do it? Yes. I think I think after being at this for a while now, as we get faster, I'm starting to get into that rhythm of almost, uh, you know, I'd say like 60% of the time. Now that's a really good sign that you say that because this groove actually becomes easier as you go faster yeah, because there's less change, waiting. Yeah. yeah. So that's, mm -hmm. that means you're actually getting it too. Very, very good news. Very good. Now, once you start getting it on the open string, I can, I do it, I like to get it going on a double stop because it requires a little bit extra kind of dig in, you know? And it gives you a little bit more of a workout when you're doing it, a little bit more sure footed. So that's a very good thing to do. But the other really good thing to do is the scale in triplets. Now, I don't know if I've ever showed you a scale in triplets. Have I showed you that yet? No? Okay, let me show you what it is. So, since we were working on G, we'll start with the key of G. A scale in triplets is when you play a triplet starting on each note of the scale. So if I started a triplet on the G, it would sound like this. See that? G-A-B. Little triplet there. And then I do another one starting on the A. And then another one starting on the B. And then on the C. See that? the top. See that? And then we can come down. Also, a really, really good way to practice the, the jig rhythm. The reason I like to do it that way is because you don't have to think of a tune. Like Jocelyn was saying there, she got to learn the catch better. And it's really hard to get a groove going on a tune that you don't know because you're busy trying to remember the tune, right? Or even a tune that you know, but it's kind of a little bit sketchy. So it's really good to do it on just a pattern like that because you can turn your brain off, concentrate on your right arm, you know, and get that to flow right through. And then it doesn't even really matter. You make a few mistakes with your left hand, doesn't matter. The important thing is that right arm, okay? Now, shall we give it a try? So first of all, to figure out the pattern, we're going to go slow. And I'm going to call out some letters and see if everybody gets in the game. So we're going to start out with G, A, B. Okay, and then it's going to be A, B, C. See that? And then B, C, D. C, D, E. <laughs> D, E, F. E, F, G. FGA, GAB, ABC, BCD, CDE, DEF, EFG, FGA, and then G to finish. Now you see at the top, to get a full triplet starting on the F, you got to go above G. See that? And finish on the G. Okay, so that's how that works there. Now let's see if we can go down. G, F, E. It's way harder going backwards. I'll try my best. I mean saying it. Let's try it. So G, F, E to start with. Ready to go. F, E, E, B. E, B, C. D, C, B. CBA BADG AGF GFE FED EF uh, EDC DCB CBA That's right. If we had another string, we could properly finish it, but we don't. Okay? So that's the pattern. 
Has everybody got that pattern sort of under control and under your fingers? You understand how it works? Okay. Shall we give it a go? Let's try it again. I'm gonna not. I'm not gonna say the letters this time. We're gonna start right down on the G string, and we're gonna see if we can go all the way up. And we'll go slow like that. Ready to go. <laughs> So now, everybody looked like they had that pattern okay. Anybody having any trouble with the pattern itself? Let's do it one more time. A little faster maybe, see if it works. Alrighty, two, three. you to learn that pattern so that we can up up the speed and work on this groove have the have the hope of working on this groove okay so that's a scale in thirds you can do it in any key of course here it is in a <laughs> It's interchangeable and it's really really good to practice okay and that's how we'll get the jig rhythm going did you get some gymnastics ribbons come and show these people they need to see it right on, right on, girl. amazing it's great she loves the gymnastics and she's doing the Irish dancing as well and they kind of lend each other they, they lend to each other and so it's really been very good actually Okay, now let's see, what tune, what other tune did we do in the second half there last time, guys? Did we do a new one yet? Have we done a new one yet? It was Big John. Oh my God, jeez. I know, and I hate Big John. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, what about the, here, we'll practice Big John here real well, quick. me. <laughs> You're not alone. There's lots of people that hate that tune. I think it's just because it's so played. Like, 
everybody plays it all the time and sometimes it's like you can't get away from it you know what i mean uh, but uh, anyway, so we'll practice that. It's such a challenging tune, but we better practice A major. It does make me think we should do a slow air because uh, we haven't. What's the last slow air that we did? Does anybody remind me the last slow air we did? It was lock the car, wasn't it? Did we do lock the car? Mm -hmm. Oh, good. I got you mixed up with the other with the beginner class. OK, well, that's great. Well, listen, why don't we do this? Why don't we practice? First of all, we'll practice Big John because Sue mentioned it, and we shouldn't we shouldn't neglect it. All right, so we'll do a quick A major scale in arpeggio. We'll practice Big John a couple times, and then let's practice Lock the Car. All right, because that's such a beautiful tune, and we don't have to sweat speed, because speed is a stretcher, a stresser, right? It's like a, it's a people like a, I often find that my my what I call adult learners feel like speed is the big meteor that it's on its way to Earth to kill everybody. You know, like, it's taken a long time. It's not, like, immediately dangerous, but it's like, oh, oh, God, you know, it's like that. So I really would like to get rid of that meteor for everybody. So, okay, so Big John McNeil, we'll start with our A major scale. This is quite a change from G. Here's an A for you to tune to it. Okay, here we go. A major. Ready? Go. suffered a tiny bit. Ready? Go. So, are we ready? Would that be an appropriate speed? Is that going to work out for a speed? Slower? Let's try it at that speed, okay? We're going for accuracy here. That's... Let's give ourselves a chance to be accurate. One, two, three, go.
you feeling about sleepy old Big John? At that speed, he sounds like he's falling asleep on the bus. You know what I mean? <laughs> Shall we try a little faster? See what happens. Right on. So let's try to say... Okay, and remember, you want to be gentle with the bow. As much as you feel like you should dig in and uh, to driver, be nice and gentle and use the speed. Okay? One more time, or two more times. Oh, one, two, three, and... Until then, though, I did because when it's when I can't play that fast and I'm just trying to, I told you it sounds like someone dropped a silverware drawer. 
know what I mean? And it's not fun anymore. And so I then it. I go, okay, I'm not going to do this. I'm going to like get it faster, but not that fast. Yeah. That would be. Oh, that's fine. That sounds fine. Now, uh, and we've talked about it before, but at that at that tempo there and with that tune, what part of the silverware drawer hit the floor? Was it the right hand part or the left hand part? It was the forks. The no, just kidding. <laughs> um, it's the coordination between the two. Ah, I see. You no, know, that I find myself. It sounds like you're trying to do a hammer on or something. Yeah. Yeah. When you're not. Yes. You know what I mean. Oh, yeah. yeah. And that speaks yeah. to uh, uh, something I was talking about with, with my beginner class, which is because I try to get this in early because they got it in with us early in the Suzuki method, which which is where your finger has to move first. Yeah, exactly. If your finger doesn't move first, it gets out of sync with your bow and does that overlappy hammer-on thing that Claire is talking about, which does sound like the silver war drawer hitting the floor, for sure. And so, at a certain speed, the it's usually the fingers out running the bow. That's usually, I've found, what happens, right? And so, your, your arm is doing a lot of work and your fingers are kind of going faster than it. All right, that could be what's going on. So, stick. So what to do about that? Stick to the about? tempo. You, you, what you want to do is stick to the tempo that's working, okay? Until there's absolutely no nothing going wrong, nothing at all, and then increase it, say, ten marks on the metronome, and see if it still see if you still have the same problem. If you do have the same problem, you really concentrate on doing the bowing with your hand. That's the big thing. That's the way I do it. Watch me go fast. I want you to watch my right arm. Even with this tune, which is String Crossing City, watch my elbow and arm. <laughs> exercises that really help with hand bowing. I think we've done them, but I'm not sure. The first one is hand, 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 arm, arm. Little notes with your hand. Also the jiggle. Really good as well. And the, uh, uh, what do you call it, this here. Oh, that's not very good. Little tiny notes, momentary notes, using only this, not this. Okay, and those are the ways to get your hand bowing instead of your arm. Yes, Sue? So, I, I, I was with you in, the, we did this in January, so I've been with you almost a year doing this. And we did it back in January, and I hated, I hated Big John. I, I couldn't stand him. Yes. Uh, and, but that... So this is now like almost a year of practicing, and I'm doing what you're saying is the less less movement. But I was really frustrated, and I am with that same. Uh, we do the dusky meadow in that other uh, the orchestra, right? Yes. Because it's all over on those strings. It's really hard to. It's really hard to get your brain moving your fingers over on those far strings. I find. Okay. But I, my kid, the, both our kids did Suzuki. And what I find I do is those stop bows. Remember how yeah. you would do a stop bow, and that helps with the fingering, right? It yes. helps keep everything coordinated. Yeah. So I don't know if that would help Claire too, right? Like the stop bows. Oh, yeah, definitely. Stop bows are always, always good if you have the patience to do them. That's the big thing because yeah. they're hard um, to do. They're hard to do. Yeah. They're tedious, 
and they, like it, it's you know makes you want to yell or something like that. But it is extreme. That's why they make you do it when you're a kid and you don't even know. That's right. <laughs> I agree. Right. It's just more of adults saying do this and you do it, you know. But so if you have the patience to to do the stop bow technique, it really really does help, and I'm, I'm glad it's helping you, Sue. And I'm glad you feel like you're getting somewhere after a year of doing it. That's really good. So we know what we have to do with this tune, okay? Anybody else have anything they'd like to add about playing Big John and eventually getting fast? Anyone? Um, I was slightly behind you yeah. <laughs> for a little bit. And what I noticed was just, just something. When we're going at a slower speed, uh, it sounds really good with a round delay. <laughs> anyway, just thought I'd add that in there. Because I was slow and I am like, doesn't sound too bad. Anyway. It's, uh, it sounds like really good what? With a round delay, um, you know, where someone is playing the same notes, but like a, a few seconds behind. Oh! Uh, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> uh, you know, Michael roll the boat ashore and do it over and over again. But yeah. It's, <laughs> but because I was slightly behind you, I could really hear it, and I'm like, oh, it sounds really cool. Okay. Anyway, I just thought I'd throw that in. Awesome. <laughs> I didn't <laughs> Sounds great. Yeah, okay, so we're going to leave this tune. We don't. We know what we need to do to improve it. We need to get the coordination between finger and bow happening a little bit better. we got ways to work on that. We need to get the hand doing the bowing. That's another thing, doing the string crossing too, which we also worked on. So refer back to those classes, the videos of those classes, where I work on, you know, down on the G, up on the A, all that kind of thing. And uh, it'll strengthen it'll strengthen the hand bowing, okay? And we'll get this tune up in speed. We will. Now let's think about lock the car. <laughs> Now, do you think we need to go over a D major scale, or do you think we can kind of carry on and see how it goes? Let's see, because A and D are not really that far off, so we should be all right. So let's do it twice, I'd say, for the practice. And I am going to exaggerate my dynamics. Do you remember I was talking about dynamics last time, and the old drummer joke, Dynamics, I'm playing as loud as I can! Uh, so we're going to try to vary it, sometimes loud, sometimes soft. You're going to use the speed of your bow for loudness and less speed for softness. And I'm going to exaggerate these dynamics to give you guys an idea, and hopefully you're going to be able to do them. So we'll do it twice with that in mind. Okay, here we go. A one, two, three.
everybody feeling? Anybody crying yet? <laughs> Anybody? Oh, don't you love it? Anybody having any problems with it or stuff they want to stick in they can't stick in or anything like that? I'm doing lots of double stops in there, that's for sure, and a few grace notes. So you might try to do the same thing, okay? And I think I might have gone over it before, but <clears throat> you're playing in the key of D and you want to dress it up. It's not too hard to do. We went over the double stop. Those are all the double stop notes you can use. And so I find if you're just kind of playing on the D and the A, that whole thing works. See that? See, it's all it all is interchangeable there between if you whether you're on the D A. Then you move up here on the A. Okay, so why don't we do this? Why don't we give it a try? And you guys are going to try to fully double stop it. Okay, just for the practice. Do as many double stops as you can in there and see how many work. All right, let's do it. And I'll do them all as well. A one, two, three. stopping. Anybody have a bit of success? I had a lot of fun. Oh. It actually sounded fun. I don't know how it sounded. It probably sounded horrible, but I had a lot of fun anyway. <laughs> That's good. I love doing double stops. It's such a fun way to dress up a tune and beef it up. Anybody else have any, any good or bad experiences doing all that double stopping? I do. Um, sometimes when I do double stops, I have to remind myself that it's just the angle of the bow and oh, you I do know. not need to order. <laughs> I know. Yeah. 
And, but that's just a me thing. Oh, it's not. It's an everybody thing. Like, I even found, because, you know, I never normally double stop a whole tune like that. It's just for practice. And I found that the second time around, I was digging in too much, you know? So I was just I, I lightened up and I angled and it was good, but it's 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 the same for everybody. It's the biggest challenge of double stops. Okay, mm -hmm. so hopefully you got a few ideas there, guys, uh, that you can use to play this tune if you ever want to perform it or uh, anything like that. You know, now now somebody reminded me last week in my beginner class that I didn't do any Christmas music, <clears throat> and it's true. I don't normally. You know, but it is Christmas, pandemic Christmas. And uh, so I thought about a tune, and I'm just going to show you here. Christmas in Killarney, great old tune, but it's one of these great songs where the melody, like the chorus, is the same as the verse. It's all the same. The only thing is this little bridge. And then it's all, the rest is all the same melody, okay? Now let me show you slowly here. It starts off on the... Uh, anybody figure out what key we're in when I'm doing this? Anybody tell me what key we're in? I'm going to guess D. D. Dog, yes. Key of D. Very good, very good. So it starts off on a B. See that B to the A. And then D, D. That's kind of the main theme there. See that? And then we got little scales. That's the first phrase. I'll do it again. B A D D. B A D D. A B A G. Another B A G. A D D. Okay? That's how that works. Let's try it together real slow. So B. Ready? B A D D. B A Let's do it again. B A D D. Ready? Go. Okay, let's do it again. Same thing. Ready? Go. like it. One more time and then we'll keep going a little bit. Ready and Okay, now the next part, Christmas in Killarney. See that? That's an A. Up the scale. B, A, F. Okay. Okay, let's just try that little bit lick there. So from the A string up we go. Ready? A, B, C, D, B, A, F. One more time. Ready? And A, B, C, D, B, A, F. And then we got this little, see that? So that's E, 
or sorry, D, and then E F E F E E. See that? And then an A B. Okay. Let's try that little part there. That's E F E E. A B. Let's try that together. Ready? And E F E E A B. One more time. Ready? And. Okay. So now, let's see if we can kind of start at the top. And I'll write all this out and send it to you guys as soon as we're done here. But let's see if we can start at the top and see how far we get through this. Okay. So B A D D. Don't give up. We'll go slow. Ready? And. Now the second time around, it changes.
Cool. So that's Christmas in Killarney. We'll get the little bridge part there next time, but then the rest is the stuff that you've already learned. Okay, any questions about that at all? Good to see you getting it by ear so quick and easy. That's great. Okay, good. Now I gotta tell you about a show. Uh, first of all, I'll tell you a couple things. Next Monday, it's gonna be a video because I am, we're driving to Nova Scotia next Monday. From, it, from the fire, frying pan into the fire. Because <laughs> numbers in Nova Scotia are not very good right now. Uh, but we're going anyway. So yeah, so we'll be driving on Monday. So it'll be a video instead of me in person. But I'll put the rest of Christmas in Killarney and a good few times going through it. And it'll be kind of like, it'll be bumping up speed with the stuff that we're working on. That's what it'll be. Slightly, you know, like five notches at a time. And so it'll be a serious practice video, okay? Uh, so that's next Monday. So video instead of class next Monday. The other thing is, uh, I have a show at the Dakota Tavern. And I don't know if you guys know where that is, but it's an awesome spot. It's on Ossington, uh, on Ossington and Bloor. And uh, it's downstairs. It's like a bluegrass venue. And I'm playing with my band, North Atlantic Drift. And this young fellow from County Clare, his name is Michael Darcy, and he uh, he has a little band, and he sings, and he writes songs, and he kind of, he's like an Irish Bob Dylan, basically, you know? Uh, and uh, he wants to do a little Irish Christmas, and we're going to provide the tunes, and it should be a really, really nice night. And you can get tickets, they're cheap, they're 10 bucks each for tickets, really, really easy. Uh, but yeah, so if you want to come to that, it would be great to see you. And, uh, and and you can hear my band, North Atlantic Drift. I think that'd be really good for everybody too, okay? And it's not, I know most of you guys are in Toronto. So, so yeah, so no class next week, video instead. And I hope that you come to the Dakota on Wednesday, the 15th, to see this little Irish Christmas show, okay? Any questions or comments or concerns or complaints? No? Okay, great. So you guys have a great uh, have a great week. I hope to see you on Wednesday. And if I don't see you uh, there, then I'll see you uh, when we're done. Yes, Simone. What time is the show? What time is the show? Very good question. Let me just oh, look. I can look it up too. Well, just I'll look it up so I can tell everybody here. It's on Facebook. I don't even know. <laughs> and I haven't even had that many shows. But anyway, it's all right. So let's see here. Darcy. So that would be, it says 9.30 p.m. Oh boy, it's a late one. Okay, I did not know that. Well, hopefully you can still come. Uh, just uh, drink a large coffee before you come. But it's a, yeah, it's a late one. It's, it's the Dakota. They do things late. Okay. Thank you. No problem. Thanks, Okay, Thank so you. we'll see you uh, the week after next. Nighty night. Okay, take care. Bye.